I love the Super Nintendo era of gaming, that's very nostalgic for me. So today I want to try to recreate the feels from the Super Nintendo platform games using AI programming and AI tools, even though I don't have any game development experience. First I will show you a short clip of the final game I created, then I will show you the progress on how I did this and how you can too using AI. So just sit back and enjoy. So of course I am playing with my PlayStation controller, I just feel that's much better. So I'm gonna try to be as careful as possible at the same time. Whoa, those three enemies here. You can see that GPT-4 are making those uh, threats. So here I'm gonna try to jump over some enemies, that's smart. So I will try to use this new platform added, you can see that platform in the air there. Oh, I dodged that pretty good, let's kill those. Okay, we are closing in now. Triangle. Okay, so this is kind of going to be my inspiration for the game. So yeah, these are the kind of the games I loved when I was growing up. So we have Super Mario World, awesome platformer, of course. Super Metroid, again, one of the best platformers of all time. So this is going to be kind of the inspiration for the game. And we're going to transit this over to ChatGPT now to try to create some IDs. That kind of has the sta same style for this game. So let's just head over there and try to, yeah, create some ideas. But first, let's take a look at today's sponsor. And yeah, that is going to be me. So I thought this video could be sponsored by my member section of my YouTube channel. So here you can see all of these videos are just for members. Uh, you will get access to the members Discord where we talk about uh, AI and stuff around that. You will also get access to the GitHub member section. Find the link in the description, become a member today. I will be doing like an in-depth tutorial on this video, how you can do game development using AI. So yeah, check it out. Let's just keep it simple. Let's brainstorm five ideas for a Super Nintendo style game that has a player character with a sword. So sword play only. 2D platform adventure with super interesting atmosphere. And I'm going to reference Super uh, Metroid and Super Mario World. So let's run this and see if we can get some ideas we like and let's pick one. Okay, so we got some few interesting ideas here, but I really like this one, Shadow of the Samurai. So the player uses precise swordplay to defeat enemies. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. So I think we're gonna pick this idea. So let me just copy that. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next part. And that is gonna be to start looking at the game we are gonna create. So yeah, you can see I pasted in the information from the I uh, think we got from ChatGPT, so that is going to be kind of the base of the game. Uh, here is where I want to start creating components. So today we're going to use Claude 3.5, and I'm going to base this game on creating a lot of different components to see if that's a good way of creating a game using this. Perfect. So I think we are actually ready now to start writing some code. So let's just take this over to the Claude 3.5 Sonnet Projects. Okay, so I went over to Claude 3.5, started a new project, gave it a name, Super Nintendo style game, create project, great. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my uh, game plan, right? So upload from device, let's just find that. So here's our game plan text, right? Good, that's uploaded. And I have this, uh, let me see here, yeah, my custom instructions I want to use. So let's add those. Uh, you're a software game developer with expertise in JavaScript, React, Tailwind, etc. Your task is to develop a working game based on the instructions from the user. Write uh, the code. When you write the code, uh, use very descriptive variable names, extend the use of comments, write clean and effective code. So let's save that. Uh, I think I want to add something here. So let me just uh, update that and I'll show you. So just quickly, I found this post on Reddit on Claude AI, one of the one that is a devrel at Anthropic. So he says when he does coding with Claude 35, he adds this to his instructions. So I want Claude code to return uh, the full code files, no rest of the code, right? Comments, but only for complicated stuff and some language preferences. Uh, we have done the language preferences, but let's grab these two parts and implement those into our instructions, right? So I just added, uh, I want uh, to build the game with React components, I want Claude to return the full code files, comments, but only for complicated stuff. So that is going to be uh, my instructions, so let's save that. Uh, now we kind of have our game plan, right? And we have our custom instructions. Now we just got to work a bit on our first prompt. So I kind of want to do this step by step. 
So I'm just gonna write the prompt now and then we're gonna get started a building. Okay, so I think I have my prompt down now. So I'm just gonna start this timer here to kind of keep track of how long we are gonna use to build this game, right? So let me just start that and let's go through the prompt here. So I am at the planning stage of my game. I have uploaded the game plan. Yeah, game plan.txt for my Super Nintendo style game. We need to build this game in a very structured format using React components. Uh, I want to build out the uh, platform level, game characters, mobs first to have a working game, I think. Then I want to add background sprites, music, game sounds, etc. after the skeleton of the game is complete. I think we should start out with the most essential part, use your expertise and build the foundational components. I'm on Windows 11, VS Code, let's start developing step by step. And I went over to VS Code. Created a new folder, I just call it Super N, and that should be everything we need. Uh, one more small note, so uh, this is kind of the third game dev video I'm doing on my channel. So I might skip some parts in this video, not to make it like one hour long. But I'm gonna try to keep in kind of the most important part. That is gonna be kind of, we're gonna look at what code we have, so we're gonna test it out. When we have the game mechanics uh, all down. We're gonna create some sprites, some music, and I'm gonna show you all that, how I implement the sprites and stuff. So yeah, let's just get started and let's see if we can actually do this. Okay, so let me show you what we got so far. Uh, we ran the first prompt, right? We got our main game component, uh, player component, level component. We updated all that. We updated our app.js with just a placeholder. And we have placeholders for boss.js, npc.js. Uh, we had some issues, so this was kind of the first iteration of the level, it was a bit buggy, right? You can see that. So I asked to add some game physics so we can play the level of the game. Went a bit back and forward here, updated some components. We still had some issues, I wanted it to feel more like Super Mario World, right? When I jump forward, I get reset to the edge, the speed is too quick. Make it feel more like Super Mario World. Uh, and then we got these uh, updates to our game. Uh, you can see here I am on uh, VS Code Studio. We have a folder called components, kind of behind my head here. We have boss.js, game.js, level.js, npc, and player.js. So I kind of like the component structure of this, looks pretty good. So if we take a look at our game so far now, we have kind of our level, right? We have our player here. Feels pretty good to play, so we can jump, we can jump, and yeah, kind of this Mario style. And that is what I was looking for. You can see these blocks here, we can replace those later with our sprite. I just quickly started working on sprites here, so I'm gonna improve that a bit more. Uh, but now I think we're just gonna start building out the level here to make it a bit bigger, bigger so we can kind of expand the level. And let's see if this moves us closer to our final game. Okay, so I made some more changes. You can see here on my cloud project, I uploaded all the JavaScript files we have so far from our game. Uh, if you go to my latest chat here now, you can see I kind of asked for to uh, implement some changes. So the game should be played on the ground level with a few boxes the player can jump onto. Uh, we had some things I didn't want in level.js, so remove that. And uh, I also added uh, more enemies, three different types of enemies. That's going to be red, yellow, and green that we will replace with sprites later. So make the AI enemies stand and wait for the players to be in range, then attack them. So I went ahead, we created that, added some few changes to that, collisions, speed values, just updated some new things. And we ended up with a new enemy.js file, a game.js file. If we go to the app now, you can see this is our game now. So I can control this and I can kind of advance in the canvas. That's much bigger now. So you can see the green, green enemies are working pretty good. But this green enemy, I think it's bugged. You can see it follows me all over the place. So we have to fix that. Here we have a different type. So this is more like a flying enemy. So that works pretty good, I think. It's kind of difficult though. And we have the red enemy. I think that works pretty good too. So we can turn around. And we can fight it, right? And yeah, I think everything is looking pretty good now for start implementing. Okay, so we, we gotta see, we gotta move this um, enemies that are placed inside uh, the, comp uh, the platform components. We can't have that. 
and we gotta fix the green enemy. And this is how we are for now. Uh, I think the next step is gonna be to implement some sprites maybe to kind of get our game yeah, looking pretty good and test out and see how the sprites work. So let me do that and uh, let's see where we are at when I've done that. Okay, so to do this I went over to Mid Journey to actually create the sprites we needed. So yeah, just using a simple prompt here, pixel art 2D, vampire, bat, character. So this is gonna be one of the yeah, enemies, right? Here are some other enemies we're gonna use. We created our character. I can show you the sprites we have now. Uh, I did something called here, so this is some kind of animation. So we needed three frames. Uh, I used paint to actually just move the feet of this character, right? So that turned out pretty good. Uh, and I kind of put that together in these three images. So you can see when I do this, he kind of moves. Uh, we have the katana. That is also going to be an animation. So this is also mid-journey. Mid, mid uh, we have our enemies, so this is the Assassin's Creed enemy. We have the background, Tiggy looks pretty cool. We have the bandit enemy, and we have the bat enemy. So that is all uh, of our sprites, right? Uh, and we have some tiles, and uh, yeah, I think it was a ground tile, and a, yeah, tile. So that was all the sprites I created for this. Uh, I also implemented some sounds. And for this I used, I can show you, I used Suno for the game sound. And I used uh, 11 Labs to create the sound effects. Let's listen to one of them. So this is the player getting, yeah, knocked down, right? And we have jump, player hit, enemy hit, and we have the sword swing. And we put all of that together, we have an audio manager file here that we got from chat, uh, Cloud 3.5. Uh, we added some new code, we have an NPC that we haven't even started on yet, that's gonna be kind of my next part. But now I just wanna show you where the game is at. Okay, so we can just click or press to start the game now, and then we are straight into it. So you can hear we are drawing the sword, and now I'm ready to go here. Okay, so we got the enemy, looks good. So you can see we have the hitboxes, you can jump and attack. I got him. So I think it looks pretty good to be honest. I want to add like a double jump feature now. And you can see when we get hit, oh, we got the sound and we can reset, right? So yeah, works pretty good and kind of excited to work more on it. Like I said, I'm going to add the double jump feature. I'm going to start adding in the NPC in the beginning here that we can talk to. And yeah, just work a bit more on it. Think it looks pretty good. Good start. Uh, we don't have too much left. Uh, we have spent four and a half hours. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, that was a bit hit and miss, but yeah. Let's just move on, add some more stuff, and come back when we are done. Okay, so I had this PS4 controller here, so I wanted to check if I could actually implement this into my game. So I just used the prompt, uh, is it possible to control the game using a gamepad? I have a PS4 controller. Just put that into Cloud 3.5, uh, got the code back, and it said, yeah, you can use left analog stick to move, X for jump, square for attack, start uh, to start the game. So I just put that into my VS uh, Studio code. And let's run it again now and test it out. So you can see it updated kind of the screen here. Click, press any key or the PS4 controller to start. So we can just now, boom, works perfect. So you can see uh, I'm running this now. So you can see I'm using the analog here to go back and forward. X to jump and my square here to kind of hit. So yeah, it works very good. So that was pretty cool if you ask me. Oh, I died here, but yeah. You can see now we have the gamepad actually in the game, so that was pretty cool. And uh, now I want to work a bit on the NPCs in the start of the game. And kind of do some storyline here. Okay, so I want this game to be a bit special. Uh, so I want to have an LLM, OpenAI's GPT-40 Mini, to actually run the conversations in the game. So this is going to be like a non-deterministic story. Uh, I have set some uh, boundaries for this. So you can see I uploaded all the files I have so far. Next step is to implement the old monk storyline for a game. If you look at the game plan, the monk should appear in the beginning of the game for a conversation and at the end of the game. The conversation should be created by using the OpenAI GPT-40 mini API. I have uploaded documentation 
Implement the NPC instructions into the game. I add a sprite later. Add the text from the NPC on the screen in a Super Nintendo style and format like the old game. Start implementing this into my game. Uh, if you look at the documentation, you can see I just uh, uh, took in like a function. I have kind of my function here and this is my system message. We're gonna play around with this and see what the best conversation could be. So now let's just run this and see if we can actually implement this AI interactions into our game, right? Okay, so we got the response here. This looks very good. So yeah, everything should be set now. Uh, I went ahead, I created this uh, uh, sprite for our monk, turn it into this, and I just put it in my public folder. We, yeah, we added the code here to the NPC part. We created a typewriter uh, code here, and everything should be set. Here you can see we have the monk here. Good. And let me show you the results. So I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see here now, when we reload this, we can go talk to him. And we get this stream, right? So take a look at this now, so you can see in the land of the rising sun, shadows lurk, right? Good luck, young warrior. But if we reset this now, boom, we get like a different response. So every single time you play the game, you will get a different response, right? So I think that's pretty cool. So that is kind of the non-deterministic part here, right? Uh, if you take a quick look at the prompt here, you can see uh, we have a boss defeated prompt. What wisdom do you have for them now? And we have kind of the, the player is starting their journey. Oops. Uh, give a short lore story, max 100 tokens and wish the player good luck. That is the first prompt we are using, right? So it's going to be interesting to see when we defeat the boss if we get some correlation between the responses. Uh, but other than that, yeah. Working pretty good. A new step is done for our game, right? Uh, I think we need to remove this blue part here. And yeah, just work on some more features. I want to add a double jump. So let me take you back when I have done that. Okay, so I went ahead. I added in the double jump. So now we can kind of set our parameters for the job lob strength and the window. That worked pretty good if you ask me. I also changed around some more parameters here to make the game feel more engaging. Uh, I updated the enemy here, so now the enemy can actually make some conversation, so they can make a phrase to kind of scare the enemy that is coming in the game. So the enemy in this case is our player, right? Uh, yeah, GPT-40 mini for that. So let me show you how this works now. Okay, so let me show you now. Uh, we also changed the background music, so now we can actually do the double jump. Okay, so I died here. It's a bit... So you can see we can jump over the enemies. Oh, that was issue, right? So we can go back and jump back. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I got him. So you can see. And you can see the enemies are making these threats. Your soul should be my trophy, right? Okay, so we got over him. We got him. Okay, good. So yeah, working pretty good if you ask me. Okay, so it's the next day, uh, so you can see I added an intro screen, I think this looks pretty good, so if you can click on any key, we can select between start game and quit game. Uh, I also went ahead, I created a new um, mob, so this is the angry bird, so this is gonna charge down and attack the player. Uh, I also made some other changes, we added something called a timer, because I kind of changed the objective of the game a bit. Now I kind of want to record the time we use to actually complete the level. I added the monk uh, 2 at the end of the level. So now we can kind of press uh, triangle here, you can see that, to kind of complete the level. And we will actually record the time we spent to complete the levels. This could be like a world record, some kind of speedrun style. Uh, is there anything else I added? Uh, I think we added the progress bar, so now we can kind of keep up where you are on the level, how close you are to finishing. And yeah, I did some other minor changes, added that we can kind of set the maximum amount of enemies. And yeah, that's pretty much it, so let me show you now how the game looks after I did all these changes and updates. Okay, so we can press any key when we start the game. Boom, we are right into it. We can still talk to our monkey, right? And you can see here's the new enemy. These are the birds charging down. Okay, so I got those. You can see the level of progress bar. Whoa, that's a lot of birds. I gotta run here. 
Okay, so we got away from those. You can see the timer and the progress bar increases when we move forward. There's a lot of enemies here now. So yeah, that's how the game is now. And the goal now is to kind of get to the end of the level and record our time. And we will have like a world record. So I'm gonna show you how that works at the end of the video where I will complete the game. So I think we are kind of complete with the game now because I tested it out. Everything works great. So you can see here is the component level completion screen. So this has level completed. We will also record uh, the best time here. So if you zoom in a bit on this code here, you can see uh, we will record a world record. That is gonna be keep a, a track of the best time. And we will update what time we did on this run. So my idea now is I'm gonna take you to a full run of the game and see if we can actually beat my world record. I think it's like 1 minute and 20 something. Uh, it is a challenging game as you will see now. So yeah, let's just do it. So the idea is when we start, then the timer starts. And when we reach the end of the level to the second monk, uh, we can press triangle and that will actually stop the timer. So now let's head over to the game, play a full run and see if I can beat my own world record. So of course I am playing with my PlayStation controller. I just feel that's much better. So yeah, let's do this now and let's fire this up and see if I can beat my record. So let's do this full run, shall we? Okay, so let's do this now. So I'm gonna try to be as careful as possible at the same time. Whoa, those three enemies here. You can see that GPT-4 are making those uh, threats. So here I'm gonna try to jump over some enemies, that's smart. But when we jump high, we gotta be careful about the charging birds, right? Okay, so we think we dodged that. So we'll try to use this new platform added. You can see that platform in the air there. Oh, I dodged that pretty good. Let's kill those. Let's use this platform. Okay, I think we're looking, we're almost halfway, we're over halfway now. I'm not looking too good on time, I think. Okay, so here are three enemies. Okay, we are closing in on the end here, looks pretty good. So I gotta be careful at the end here now. Let's kill those. Okay, I gotta avoid those. Yeah, I had to do that. Let's kill that. Just be careful here at the end now. I'm not taking any chances. Let's kill those two. Okay, we are closing in now. Triangle. Okay, we beat the record. So the re previous record I think was 121. So yeah, perfect. That is the game. So that looked pretty easy since I only did this once, but I died loads of times. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm happy with this. I think it's pretty cool. And the world record now is now saved, so now I can kind of challenge my own time. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm super happy how my... Nintendo game turned out right and we can see the also the quit game boom that works too. So that's pretty cool uh, But yeah, like I said super happy with the game Let me just do a quick summary and see where I think we can take this in the future So again my conclusion is that yeah, this worked out pretty smooth uh, I was supposed to time this but I forgot to turn off the timer. So uh, yeah 25 hours. I think we spent about six hours six to seven hours maybe Maybe six to eight, I'm not quite sure. But here you can kind of see all the code we ended up with, all the small components. So the components part worked out as planned. It was very easy to work with, having all of these co components instead of having one big file, right? So that is very smart. I uh, learned something from that. Other than that, what can I say? Using Midjourney, uh, Suno, and Eleven Labs, very easy to get assets for your game. Uh, as I probably will do in maybe like a tutorial if people want that actually, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, other than that, very smooth again, uh, I learned a bunch of stuff and yeah, really recommend you trying it out. Uh, it's really fun to kind of take one idea you have in your head and try to get it out into software, right? So my idea was to, try to create like the feels of the Super Nintendo platformer. Uh, I think I did that. I kind of felt that. And it was very cool using the controller to play with. That gave like the additional feels. Uh, but other than that, yeah, thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And yeah, maybe I think I'm going to be back to live streaming tomorrow. So check that out if you're watching this today. Other than that, see you in the next one. Have a great day. And yeah, speak soon.